sense reality a little better. In such cases there appears in the common presence of these favorites of yours a strong desire to work upon themselves, to work, as they say, for the salvation of their souls. But needless to say, nothing can result from such desires of theirs simply because it is already too late, the time allotted them for this purpose by great nature having already passed, and although they see and feel the necessity of making the required being efforts, yet for the fulfillment of these desires they now have only ineffectual yearnings and the lawful infirmities of old age. Well, my boy, my research and investigations concerning the further activities of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash. For the welfare of the three brain beings arising and existing on this planet of yours made the following clear to me. When this great, and as regards his reason almost incomparable, sacred individual became definitely convinced that the sacred ways that exist for the purpose of self-perfection for all three brain beings of the universe were no longer suitable for the beings of the planet Earth. Then, after his year of special observation and studies of their psyche, he again ascended that same Mount Vesniema, and for several terrestrial months contemplated and pondered how to carry out his decision, that is, to save the beings of this planet from their inherited predisposition to the crystallization of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer, by means of those data which remained intact in their subconscious. pondering of his definitely convinced him that it would indeed be possible to save them by means of the data and their common presence for engendering this sacred being impulse, but only if the manifestations of these data surviving in the subconscious were without fail to participate in the functioning of the consciousness under whose direction their daily waking existence flows, and furthermore, only if this being impulse were to be manifested over a long period through every aspect of this consciousness of theirs. Chapter 27 The order of existence created for men by the very saintly Ashiata Shemesh. Beelzebub went on to relate the following. My research and investigations also made clear to me that after the very saintly Ashiata Shemash had pondered on Mount Vesnium and had drawn up in his mind a definite plan for his further most saintly activities, he did not return to the city of Babylon but went straight to the city of Jufapal, the capital of a country then called Perlantec, situated in the middle of the continent of Asia. On arriving there, he first of all entered into relations with the brethren of the Chaptantori Brotherhood, which had its place of existence not far from that city, and whose name signified, to be, or not to be at all. This brotherhood was founded five of their years before the arrival of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash on the initiative of two terrestrial three-brained beings who had become genuine initiates, according to the principles existing before the Ashiatan epoch. One of these two terrestrial beings who had become genuine initiates was named Poundaluro and the other, Sensaminiriko. You should know, by the way, that in the common presences of both of these genuine terrestrial initiates their highest being parts had already been coded to the gradation called completion, and that, 
During their further existence, they had time to perfect these highest parts of theirs to the required gradation of sacred objective reason. Thus today, their perfected highest being parts have become worthy to have, and in fact do have, the place of their existence on the holy planet Purgatory. My further exhaustive investigations showed that in all the separate spiritualized parts of the common presences of both of these three brain beings, Pangaliro and Sensaminirico, there arose and was continuously sensed the suspicion, which later became a conviction, that owing to some obviously non-lawful causes, something very undesirable, for them had been acquired and was functioning in their general organization and that, moreover, it was impossible for this very, undesirable something, to be removed simply by means of the data present within them. They therefore decided to seek out some other beings like themselves who were striving for the same aim, so that they could try together to rid themselves of this very, undesirable something. They soon found beings corresponding to the same among them, monks, dwelling in places called monasteries, of which there were many at that period in the environs of the city of Jolfapal. And with these monks whom they had chosen they founded the said brotherhood. After arriving in Jolfapal, the very saintly Ashiata Shemash established relations with the brethren of the Chaptantori Brotherhood, who were already working on that abnormal functioning of their psyche which they themselves had observed, and he began to enlighten their reason by means of objectively true ideas, and to guide their being impulses in such a way that they could sense these truths without the least participation either of the undesirable factors already abnormally crystallized in their presence, or of any new factors that might arise from the results of external perceptions received from the abnormally established forms of ordinary being existence. While thus enlightening the brethren of this Chaptantori Brotherhood and discussing his suppositions and intentions with them, the very saintly Ashiata Shemash was occupied with drawing up the rules, or, as is also said there, the statutes for the brotherhood which, in association with the brethren he had already initiated, he founded in the city of Jolfapal, and which was later called the Pishtagori Brotherhood, a name signifying, only he will be called and become the son of God who acquires in himself conscience. Single quote. When everything had been worked out and organized with the participation of these brethren of the former Chaptantori Brotherhood, the very saintly Ashiata Shemash sent these same brethren to various places and entrusted them, under his general guidance, with the task of spreading the idea that in the subconscious of all men there are crystallized and always present the data manifested from above for engendering in them the divine impulse of genuine conscience, and that only he who acquires the ableness to let the action of these data participate in the functioning of that consciousness in which he passes his everyday existence has, in an objective sense, the honest right to be called and really to be a genuine son of our common father creator of all that exists. These brethren preached this objective truth at first chiefly among the monks of the many monasteries in the environs of Jolfapal, and later among the ordinary inhabitants of the city. As a result of their preaching they first of all selected 35 serious and well-prepared what are called novices, for this Heshtabori Brotherhood that they had founded in the city of Jolfapal. Thereafter, the very 
saintly Ashiata Shemesh, while continuing to enlighten the minds of the former brethren of the Chaptantori Brotherhood, also undertook, with the help of these brethren, to enlighten the reason of those 35 novices. And so it continued for the whole of one of their years, and only after this did certain of the brethren of the former Chaptantori Brotherhood, as well as certain of the 35 novices, gradually prove worthy to become what are called all rights possessing brethren of this first Hishtabori Brotherhood. According to the statutes drawn up by the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, any one of them could become an all rights possessing brother of the Hishtabori Brotherhood only when, in addition to the attainment of certain other also foreseen objective merits, he could bring himself, in the sense of the ableness consciously to direct the functioning of his own psyche, to the state of knowing how to convince to perfection a hundred other beings, and to prove to them first that the factor for the impulse of objective conscience exists in man, and second how this impulse must be manifested in order that he may respond to the real sense and aim of his existence, moreover, so to convince them that each of these others, in his turn, would acquire in himself the necessary intensity of ableness to convince no fewer than a hundred others also. It was those who became worthy to be such, all rights possessing brethren, of the Hishtabori Brotherhood who were first given the name of priest. For your better comprehension of the very saintly activities of Ashiata Shemesh, you must also know that afterward, when all the results of his saintly labors were destroyed, this word, priest, as well as the word, initiate, about which I have already told you, was used and continues to be used by your favorites down to the present time in two quite different senses. In one sense the word, priest, was and still is commonly used, but only in certain places, for unimportant separate groups of those professionals existing there whom everybody now calls, confessors, or, Demon. And in the other sense, the word, priest, was used and still is used to designate those beings who, by their pious existence and by the merits of their deeds performed for that, good of those around them, stand out so much from the rank and file of the ordinary three-brained beings there that whenever they remember them there arises in their presence the process called gratitude. Single quote. Already during that period, while the very saintly Ashiata Shemash was enlightening the reason of the brethren of the former Chaptantori Brotherhood and of the newly collected 35 novices, there began to spread among the ordinary beings of the city of Jolfapal and its environs the true idea that in the common presence of men beings all the data exist for the manifestation of the divine impulse of conscience, but that this divine impulse does not take part in their general consciousness, and that it takes no part because certain of their manifestations, while bringing them various, immediate satisfactions, destined to be paid for later, and numerous material advantages, nevertheless gradually atrophy the data put into their presence by nature for evoking in other beings around them, without distinction of, brain system, the objective impulse of divine love. This true information began to spread thanks chiefly to the ideally wise foresight of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, which obliged, as I have already told you, each one striving to become an all rights possessing brother of the Hishtabori Brotherhood to attain, in addition to many definite self-earned merits, the ableness to bring the three 
separate spiritualized and associating parts of the further hundred three brain beings there to sense the divine impulse of conscience. When the organization of the first Hishtabori Brotherhood in the city of Jorfapel had been more or less regulated, and was established in such a way that the further work could be carried on independently, simply under the direction of the reason of the brethren present in the Brotherhood, the very saintly Ashiata Shemash himself then said, Choosing from among the all rights possessing brothers those who had begun, consciously by their reason and unconsciously by their feelings, to sense this divine impulse in their subconscious, and who are fully convinced that by certain efforts upon themselves this divine being impulse might become and remain forever an inseparable part of their ordinary consciousness and those who had sensed and become aware of this divine impulse of conscience, and who are called, first the three initiates, he set apart, and he began to enlighten their reason separately concerning, objective truths, which up till then had been quite unknown to the three brain beings of that planet. And it was these, first degree initiates whom he had set apart from the others who were the first to be called, great initiates. all the principles of being of the initiated beings there were removed by the very saintly Ashiata Shemash and later came to be called Ashiata's Renewals. Single quote. Well then, it was to those same, great initiates, who were first set apart that the very saintly, now most saintly, Ashiata Shemash then explained in detail, among other things, what this being impulse of objective conscience is, and how factors for its manifestation arise in the presence of three brain beings. And concerning this he once said the following, the factors for the being impulse of objective conscience arise in three brain beings from the localization in their presence of particles of the emanations of the sorrow, of all our loving and long-suffering, endless creator, that is why the source of manifestation of genuine conscience in three centered beings is sometimes called the representative of the creator. Quote, quote, and this sorrow is formed in our all-maintaining common father from the struggle constantly proceeding in the universe between joy and sorrow. Single quote. And he said further, In all the three centered beings of our entire universe without exception, including as men, owing to the data crystallized in our common presence for engendering in us the divine impulse of conscience, all of us, and the whole of our essence in its very foundation are and must be only suffering. And we must be suffering, because this being impulse can come to its full manifestation in us only through the constant struggle between two quite opposite complexes of functioning, issuing from two sources of quite opposite origin, namely between the processes of the functioning of our planetary body and the parallel processes of the functionings arising progressively from the coding and perfecting of our higher being bodies within this planetary body of ours, which processes in their totality actualize every kind of reason in three centered beings. Consequently, like all three centered beings of our great universe, we men existing on the earth, owing to the presence in us also of the factors for engendering the divine impulse of objective conscience, must always inevitably struggle with the two quite opposite functionings arising and proceeding in our common presence, the results of which are always sensed by us either as desires, or as non-desires. And so, only he who consciously 
assists the process of this inner struggle, and consciously assists the non-desires to prevail over the desires, behaves in accordance with the being of our common Father Creator Himself, whereas He who consciously assists the contrary only increases His sorrow. to everything I have just told you. Scarcely three years passed before all the ordinary beings of the city of Jolfapal and its environs, and even of many countries of the continent of Asia, not only knew that this divine being impulse of genuine conscience existed in them and that it could take part in the functioning of their ordinary, waking consciousness, and that, in all the brotherhoods of the great prophet Ashiata Shemash the initiates and priests were elucidating and indicating what had to be done and how it had to be done in order to attain this. But what is more, almost all of them began to strive and to exert themselves in order to become priests of the Hishtabori Brotherhood, many branches of which were founded at that period on the continent of Asia, each one functioning almost independently. And these almost independent brotherhoods arose in the following order. When the common work of the Brotherhood founded in the city of Jolfapal had finally been established, the very saintly Ashiata Shemash began to send the aforementioned great initiates with appropriate instructions to organize similar brotherhoods in other countries and towns of the continent of Asia, while he himself remained in Jolfapal, and from there he guided the activities of these helpers of his. it may have been, my boy, it turned out that almost all your favorites, those strange three-brained beings, wished and began to strive with all their spiritualized being parts to have divine objective conscience in their ordinary waking consciousness that is to say, most of the beings of Asia of that time began to work upon themselves under the guidance of initiates and priests of the Hishtabori Brotherhood, in order to transfer into their ordinary consciousness the results of the data present in their subconscious for end. Gendering the impulse of genuine divine conscience and thereby, on the one hand, to have the possibility of completely removing from themselves, perhaps forever, the consequences of the properties of the organ buffer, maleficent not only for them personally but also for subsequent generations to whom these properties would pass by heredity and, on the other hand, to have the possibility of consciously taking part in diminishing the sorrow of our common endless father. Owing to all this, at that period, particularly on the continent of Asia, the question of conscience began to predominate during the ordinary process of being existence of your favorites, both in the state of waking consciousness and in the passive instinctive state. Even those three brain beings of that time in whose presence the taste of this divine impulse had not yet been transubstantiated, and who in their very strange consciousness, proper to them alone, had only the barest indications about this being impulse which could be present in them as well, also tried to manifest themselves in everything according to these indications. The upshot of it all was that within ten terrestrial years there had disappeared of their own accord the two chief forms of abnormally established ordinary being existence there, from which flowed and continue to flow most of the maleficent causes that increasingly prevent the establishment of conditions for at least a normal outer being existence for your unfortunate favorites. In the first place, their division into numerous communities, with various forms of organization for external and even internal existence which they call 
state organizations disappeared of itself and, in the second place, there also disappeared in the same way those various what are called castes or classes that had long before been established in these numerous communities of theirs. In my opinion, it was the second of these two chief forms of abnormally established ordinary being existence, namely, the assigning of each other to different classes or castes, that had become, as you will surely understand for yourself later, the basis for the gradual crystallization in the common presence of your favorites of a particular psychic property that in the whole of the universe is inherent exclusively in the presence of those three brain beings. This unique property was formed in them soon after the second. Transapalnian perturbation and gradually developing and becoming stronger in them, passed from generation to generation by heredity, until it reached contemporary beings as a lawful and inseparable part of their general psyche, and this particular property they call, egoism. Sometime later, at an appropriate place in my further tales about the three brain beings of the planet Earth, I will explain to you in detail how, thanks to the abnormal conditions of external being existence established there, your favorites first began assigning each other to various castes and how subsequently, Thanks again to similar abnormalities, this maleficent form of mutual relationship has persisted until today but meanwhile you should know that the cause of the arising and their common presence of this unique property of egoism was that, owing as always to those abnormally established conditions, soon after the second Transapalnian perturbation their general psyche became dual. This became fully evident to me during my last sojourn on the surface of this planet of yours, when I began to be deeply interested in the legomanism concerning the deliberations of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash entitled, The Terror of the Situation, in the course of my detailed research. and investigations relating to his subsequent very saintly activities and their results, the question arose in me of how and why those factors, obtained from the particles of the emanations of the sorrow of our common Father Creator for the actualizing in their presence of the Divine Being impulse of objective conscience, were crystallized just in their subconscious, and so avoided that final degeneration of all the data placed in them for engendering the being impulses of faith, hope, and love in this strange anomaly, by the way, fully justifies one of the numerous wise sayings of our highly esteemed, irreplaceable, and honorable Mullah Nasser Eddin, which states, Every real happiness for man can arise exclusively from some unhappiness, also real, which he has already experienced. This duality of their general psyche is produced because, on the one hand, various what are called individual initiatives issue from that localization in their presence which is always predominant during their waking existence and is nothing but the result of accidentally perceived impressions coming from their abnormal environment which taken as a whole make up their so-called consciousness and on the other hand various other individual initiatives simultaneously issue from that normal localization existing in the presence of every kind of being which they call the subconscious. And because these individual initiatives issue from two different localizations, each of your favorites in his daily waking existence is, as it were, divided into two independent personalities. Here it must be remarked that this duality was 
also the reason why their presence gradually lost that impulse, indispensable to free brain beings, called sincerity. Later, the practice even took root among them of intent. Tionally suppressing this being impulse called 